<laughs> people. Uh, well, thank you all for coming out. Uh, this is the first fireside chat that we're going to be having this year uh, for the Grace Filled Life theme that we got going on uh, for the 2019 and 2020 school year. Uh, if you don't know me already, I'm pretty sure I've met everyone that is here. My name is AJ Robinson. I'm the student chaplain here at Sunno Kim. And tonight, talking about community, we have our own associate professor of spiritual formation, Dr. Mike Foyts. So let's give him a round of applause for the and, and we brought a special guest, Gracie, which Sadie is holding. And it looks like she's having a good time. <laughs> uh, but we're so glad to have uh, Dr. Voigt's be here tonight to talk about community. Uh, we know that's gonna be a good word that he's gonna share. Uh, and we're just very excited uh, to hear what he has to say. Along with being the Associate Professor of Spiritual Formation, uh, Dr. Boyd is also a Baylor grad. So do we have person? any Texas people? Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. So he is a Baylor grad, he is a past MDiv and DMIN student here at Asbury. And he also got his PhD in England. Wow. So he's living fancy. Too many. Living, <laughs> living fancy. Aside from that, he is a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. He likes to fly his drone. And he likes to watch sports. He's married to his wife, Cheryl. And they have two kids that are grown. Grown and they live in the Dallas area. Uh, and so, so yeah, that's a little bit about Dr. Boyd. He's also a lay monk at Gethsemane Abbey. So how about that? How about that? Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 exactly. So I didn't ask that. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Oh, uh, but Dr. Boyd, we're, we are, we're so excited to have you here. And uh, we can't, we can't wait to hear what you have to say. So, um, uh, before we get started and we hand it over to Dr. Boyd, uh, let's go to Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Um, we thank you for giving us all another opportunity of being able to grow closer to you. Right now, we just ask that you bless this time with Dr. Boyd and all of us in attendance. We just ask um, that you speak through Dr. Boyd during, during this time and let the words that come out of his mouth uh, be the words that you give him. It's a really righteous and precious thing that we pray these things. Thank you. It is great to be here with y'all. Um, uh, you know, these, these fireside chats, we, we wanted to have opportunities for y'all to hear from faculty members, not in a classroom setting, but in more of a conversational setting about the various means of grace, as that's our theme this academic year. And so every month we're going to talk about a different one. And so we're talking about community. Now, I'll, I'll be honest. I probably shouldn't be the faculty member talking about community because community is hard for me. It's always been really tough for me. I've always kind of been a loner, very guarded, not wanting to let people in. And that's really strange because I come from a big family. I was raised in New Orleans and everybody's your friend in New Orleans, right? I mean, you just, you just you just find somebody and you're instant friends in New Orleans. I was called to ministry when I was 10 years old. But I didn't tell anybody. Because I was embarrassed. I was the kid in school who was always picked on. I was the one, I mean, I was the nerdy kid. You should have seen my glasses with the tape and all that stuff. My, my brothers were, were the athletic ones. I was the stat boy. And I just didn't trust people enough to let them in my life. Um, when, when we got here, um, see, we, we got here in 1990. Boy, this place looked different. <laughs> I mean, well, the, this place wasn't even here. The trailer park was still there on, on, on the edge of campus. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd always been a good writer. I love to write. I kept a journal since I was eight years old. But I had a difficult time speaking. I just, I 
felt so uncomfortable, so unworthy. And so I got here and I felt like I was the least theological person here, the least spiritual person here, the one person that probably shouldn't be here because everybody else knew what they were doing. <laughs> Anybody else ever feel that way, huh? Probably everybody, right? And so I said, okay, I'm just going to study and I'm going to get through and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on to ministry. Now, how in the world can you go into ministry if you're uncomfortable sharing yourself with someone? But yet, for me, it was, okay, I don't really like people, but I'm going to go into ministry anyway. I don't want to let people into my life, but I'm going to go into ministry. And I don't know why or how. And it wasn't until a couple of professors, when I was here, started to invest in me. I met with Dr. John Oswalt every Friday at noon. And I didn't know it at the time, but, I, but he invited me to be part of a Wesleyan band. I mean, I didn't know what that was. I was raised Lutheran. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I knew who Wesley was, but I didn't know what band was. Um, and every Friday at noon, we would meet, and he would let us have it. And if, if you all know Dr. Oswalt, when he speaks, like you, you hear the thunder, right? And it was an incredible experience for me because I grew to trust the people that I met with on Fridays at noon. I didn't want to miss, partly because I was scared of Dr. Oswald, but, but, but I didn't want to miss because I needed those folks in my life more than I really wanted to admit, I think. And so I graduated from here um, and really struggled. I was associate pastor at First Methodist in Waco, Texas, 4,000 members, great congregation. It was my home church. And I went back to be a, a pastor at that, at, that, at that church. But I felt all alone. Because I, I felt like I had to be above everybody else, right? I'm, I'm the pastor, so I have to be up here I need people to respect me, and I felt so inadequate. Listen to this, y'all. My very first hospital call as a pastor, I went on my second day on, on the job, if you can call ministry a job, it's not, but they said, okay, Mike, you need to go see Della Watley. She just had surgery. She's at Hillcrest Hospital. I said, okay, I'm, I can do this. So I went to go see Della Watley in the hospital. And I didn't know what to do. So I walk in, kind of peer around the door. Are you in here? She said, yes, you must be the new associate pastor. Come on in. I, I, I must have been shaking. She said, Mike, it's going to be OK. <laughs> I said, thank you. And I must have been crying or something. She said, oh. she, I mean, she's just out of surgery. She said, maybe I should pray for you. I said, thank you. <laughs> And so she prayed for me. Yeah, it was, it was a disaster. But I'm still laughing about it. And she went home to be with Jesus a few years ago. But up until that time, we still laughed about that. Um, here was a member of the church praying for her pastor. When I, as a brand new pastor, who just spent three years in seminary, should have been praying for her. And that ministry she offered to me was huge and really set me on a different path when it came to allowing people into my life. Mm. You see, when I was a kid, the adults in my life kind of hurt me. I couldn't trust them. Mm. My friends, I, couldn't, I felt like I couldn't trust them. And so I just went through life with this guard around me. And I thought that's the way life should be. You know, I, I just don't want anybody to see the real me. And that's not any way to go through life. That's not any way to be in ministry at all. And we say that, but, but y'all know what I'm talking about, because that's real. We're not used to sharing our, our struggles with people because we give away some of that power 
and that control we have over our lives. And are they going to abuse it? And that's where I think if you can find a community that is real, allowing yourself to share some of those struggles with you can be so fulfilling. I've been a part of a, of a band of faculty members, and it gets, it gets pretty intense. Um, you know, I mean, on more than one occasion, you know, Mike, we love you, but what hidden sins are you keeping from us? It's like, what? I don't have any sins. I'm at Asbury. I don't have any sins. I don't have tenure yet. I don't have any sins. <laughs> people there's a freedom there when when I first came back to Asbury after being a pastor we moved, we moved back here in 2001 and I was the alumni director and I traveled probably half time all around the country visiting with our graduates and I have to tell you there is a division in in our alumni that I quickly discovered. There are some alumni who graduate from here and five years later, they're out of ministry. Probably half of them. Probably half of your graduating class will be doing something other than ministry within five years. And that, that, that statistic goes across all, all seminaries, not just Asbury. And you, but you would think Asbury's would be less than that, wouldn't you? And then there's another group of pastors who are absolutely thriving in ministry and in their relationship with Christ. And there's a difference that I discovered, and it was part of my doctor of ministry dissertation. The ones that are burnt out in ministry are the ones that feel all alone in life. The ones who are thriving in ministry are the ones who have surrounded themselves with other people. Let me tell you, it's lonely out there. It's hard out there. Because if you are a pastor, for example, you can't just go to Walmart. You go to Walmart, everybody's watching how your kids behave. Hmm. You can't go out to eat and order anything you want. Well, the pastor had fried chicken. He doesn't need me eating fried chicken. It's like, just let me eat my fried chicken. And it's unfair, but that's the way it is. And so you need to have people around you that you can share that with. And uh, some of the dearest friends I have don't even seem like friends. They're family. And they're, they're, they're members of First Methodist in Waco, where I was a pastor in, back in 1993. They're family to us. And if y'all are watching tonight, hi, I miss you. I'll see you soon when we come back for homecoming. Um, <laughs> see, I had to get in Baylor, Joe, you know that. Okay. Um, but we've kept in touch with them. There's, there's a, oh, should I call it a lie out there? There's a misunderstanding, that's nicer. Um, <laughs> that you shouldn't be friends with the folks in your congregation. Have you heard that before? There needs to be a separation. Don't believe that. Be friends with the folks that are in the congregations you're serving. Let them into your life. A couple years ago, I had cancer surgery when I was pastor at the Methodist Church in Danville. And for the first time, I was on the receiving end of ministry. And by sharing with these folks what procedure I was having done, what kind of cancer I had, it invited them into our lives. And there, and there was a bond that we had with that congregation. And then people start coming to me and telling me things about their life that I didn't even know. Y'all, let people into your life. And let it start here. Let me tell you that the closest relationships 
that I discovered that, that our graduates have are with other students, or the folks that they were students with. There's, there's, there's one group of about 10 pastors, and they've met every year since they graduated together on the beach in Florida. Just them. And they've done this for like 25 years, I think. Every year. Build relationships while you're here that will last. And that's kind of hard to do in Wilmer. Mm. It's kind of hard to do on this campus. Because sometimes, I'll just say it, we try to outholy each other, don't we? <laughs> don't we? Or we try to like outsmart each other or outworship each other. Okay, they're raising one hand to worship. I'm going to raise both. <laughs> That's it. I mean, we, we do that. We're so guarded here because we have such a low view of ourselves that we want to try to outdo each other. If you can't allow people into your life while you're a student here, it's going to be really hard for you to do that when you leave here. Because the folks who are here have a shared call to ministry, a shared commitment to Jesus. Whatever that call to ministry is, there's a reason why they're here. Just like there's a reason you're here. When you leave this place, you're gonna get people who only think about God one day a week for an hour. And it's, it's a very lonely feeling. And to invite them in to not just be church members, we have enough of those folks, but to be disciples. It means that you start sharing your life and living life with them. And that begins while you're here. So take advantage of the opportunities that we have here. Listen, I, I mean, I mean, I go back to, to my days in the alumni office from folks who graduated 60 years ago up until folks who graduated last year. What I hear the most consistently from our graduates is the sense of community that they felt when they were here and they invested in other people. And it was a community that was administered. It wasn't part of some administrative structure. It's just what happened organically. If you are not part of a small group, start easy. If you're too shy, too embarrassed to be in a band, just be in a sports group with somebody. Be in a group to go hiking together. Go on a weekend trip together. Just find some folks that you can live life with. And just see what God is going to do in that group. I'm telling you, um, it's important. You all know what John Wesley said about not inviting others into your life, right? Come on. This is what Wesley said. He said that... that Christianity is a social faith. It means we, when he talked about social um, relationships with others, it, it, it meant allowing people into your life. And he said to make it a solitary faith is to destroy it. Hmm. Some of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life, hmm. I've made some pretty bad decisions. You don't have to ask Cheryl, but... Just, just believe me, were the decisions that I made without consulting other people. Mm. Well, they don't know my situation. They don't know me. I know myself better than anybody else, and I'm going to make this decision. Bad decision. And it affected a lot of people in my life. I mean, I'm thinking of a big one. That's what other people can be to us. They can be the voice of God to us that we need to hear. 
Sometimes we don't want people in our lives because we know what they're going to say and we don't want to hear it. Mm. Right? Uh -huh. But that's why we need them in our lives, to save us from ourselves. Yeah. I just want you all to know um, that I'm just one faculty member, but the colleagues that I have on the faculty want to be in fellowship and in life with you all. We really do. Um, one of the reasons that I left pastoral ministry after 25 years of pastoral ministry was to be with y'all. Um, I'm not a world-class scholar. I mean, I'm a medievalist, and I love translating medieval Latin. That's fun. <laughs> You're mocking me. <laughs> and, but I can be doing lots of things, but I want to be in community with y'all. Um, and the student body has even ministered to me. I had a follow-up surgery to my cancer surgery my first year here. Hmm. Was anyone in, in that class? We, I, I couldn't leave the house, so we had class at our house. Was anybody here in that class? That was awesome. And they got into small groups in our house, and Grace was part of a little group, and she laid down and went to sleep in one of the prayer groups. And <laughs> she was a really good girl that day. Um, um, but I just want to be with y'all. And if there's any time that y'all just need to talk, email me, let me know. Let's get together, because uh, I don't want anyone leaving this place or going through a time in your life like God does with people when they come here. They come here for an education and leave with a whole lot more, and God really kind of messes up your life, doesn't he, while you're here? If I can further mess up your life, I would love to talk to you. <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> I don't want you to feel like you're alone. Well, I've gone on way too long. Thank you all for joining us on Facebook Live. Um, let's have a prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of other people that you place in our lives. Lord, forgive us for not taking advantage of that, for not allowing people in so that we can bless them and they can bless us. Lord, we're sorry for the times that we have violated trust in people's lives. We know people have violated trust in our life, and Lord, some of us are still working through that. But I pray, Lord, that forgiveness for those people will come and be real in our lives. And that we will not close ourselves up, but allow people in. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for Asbury. Thank you for your call on our lives that... A lot of the folks in this room are still trying to, 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 to figure out. But we love you. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.